Hello and welcome to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclay Street, uh, number 14 today. Famous Bulldog number, of course. Um, Mercedes-Benz vans. We wouldn't be here without him, Marcus. Well, Would actually, not. you would. You'd, you'd be here. I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd, be some, uh, I'd just be some automated computer ding dong <laughs> oh, 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 ask questions. But thankfully, we've got our good friends to keep us, you know, keep a human element to it. How are you, mate? You, must be, you must be riding high after the weekend. Going well, thank you, mate. Yeah, definitely, definitely a, probably a nicer feeling. Um, after winning sort of two two on the trot after our first sort of two weeks, which which we've spoken about already, but uh, boys boys have been really good. Teams been playing obviously well together, and just back to our sort of bulldog brand and style of football. So uh, you've played it before. It just feels good to to have our sort of momentum sort of up and moving again. Yeah. What was the kind of most pleasing thing for you to come out of the game? Because I mean, there was a lot to like, you know, watching on uh, watching on the mm. telly. Yeah, well, I mean, when you consider still, I think we fielded maybe one of the youngest teams again for the round, which is, you know, it's a good sign. But you understand there's realities with being young and being able to deal with, you know, challenging on-field scenarios. But when you consider that we lost two players, one, you know, obviously Naughty in the second-ish quarter, I think, and then then Lloydy in the third, to then sort of just battle out and grind out the game with two less on the bench, I think was a pretty good feat, Um, especially, like I said, with the young group, our ability just to absorb probably Sydney's third quarter, I guess, fight back. They come back with a bit of venom and were well and truly sort of had some momentum. For us to be able to sort of weather that storm and then just play the game out, I thought was was really encouraging. And then you look at some of the individual performances like Timmy English, I think, had probably one of his best games for the club. He did, yeah. He's, he's still brilliant. growing. He's still growing his ruck craft side of things. And it's going to just come as he plays more and more against more mature and and, and different ruckmen. But you're seeing his, his, his strength and his sort of influence in the transition game, his ability to get up and down the ground and get involved from a ball perspective. So he, he had a great game. And, and once again, he sort of fought the lone hand as a, a single ruckman against yeah. two, you know, two better or more experienced ruckman. So um, he's yeah. still, he did a really good job, Timmy. So really proud of his efforts. We'll get to the injuries in a second because they're, you know, they're pretty significant ones for the, for the, for the side. But I just want to stay on Timmy for, a, um, Timmy English just for a minute. It was kind of the most, it's probably the most complete game I've seen him play at, at this level. You know, we, we all know the, the skills he's got at his disposal and that he's having to mm. shoulder a lot of responsibility as a young ruckman. I'm not sure how old Timmy is now. Is he 21, 22? Yeah, yeah, just about, I reckon, yeah. Yeah, but, and, um, but he, you know, he was filling into the hole at one end, lace out passes a couple of times, went mm. forward, clunked one, kicked the goal. Like, it was a, it was a pretty comprehensive... Um, performance in the ruck for me, young fella. Yeah, he, he moves around, and I, I always remember this when he first came to the club. Like he was six foot sort of four or six foot five with his ability to sort of cover ground, and he's he's obviously a fair bit bigger than that. But his ability to get involved in our transition play and even be a basically a, a, a feeder out of the stoppage from a hands point of view. But like you said, yeah. he's, he's a really neat kick. He uses the ball well. Um, and he is still so young. Like I, he wouldn't have even played fifty games yet, Timmy. So I think unfairly yeah. we expect a lot from him, and we do young ruckmen in in the game because of their their size and their height and their ability to influence. But he continues to grow. I think week on uh, week in week out with with the experience that he gets. So it, it's just great for him personally, but obviously us as a group to be benefiting from his growth. If there's been one sort of a knock on him and it's not even really a knock it's just the sort of the natural progression of things it's it's when he's come up against the very top line ruckman and we are in a mm. current era of um exceptional ruckman in that there's a lot bracket, of it. you know yeah it's yeah you know mm. Brody grundy and max gorn are the two obvious ones that jump to mind and yeah nick nat Nui gets thrown in there but todd yep. goldstein is 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 one mm. of those as well and he is back Absolutely. to his best at the moment. So Timmy gets that challenge this week. I'm sure that's kind of on his radar and on yours as well, I suppose. Yeah, it would be. Toddy, um, yeah, he's like you said, very experienced ruckman. He's an All-Australian. He, he's been very good for a long period of time and very similar in terms of, you know, Todd Goldstein has a great tank too. So his ability to cover ground will also present some challenges and, and you sort of do, feel do you think, like... Do you, think, do you think Goldie would be like, that would be sort of the... the 
the most similar in style Ruckman to Timmy that Timmy will grow into, do you think? A little bit. I think Timmy's got a number of traits that are similar to probably a couple of couple of Ruckman, but yeah. Todd's ability to sort of hit that ball and then sort of stream forward. And uh, I mean, Max, Maxie's a, Maxie Gorn's a great sort of overhead mark and he can be a great, you know, interceptor yeah. forward and back too. Goldie's ability to stay stay in the chain is one thing that, that's obviously exceptional. Um, it'll be a challenge for us to deal with, but I feel like Timmy's, you know, Timmy's in a good space to, to deal with that. And once again, get opportunities to play against the best, which he'll, he'll hopefully look forward to um, and then learn from yeah. as well. And what can you tell us about the injuries? Because as, as good a win as it was the other night, it came at a bit of a cost, mate. A mm, little bit sour, unfortunately, but it's, it's just the game that we play, you know, um, it's not always going to be going to be a perfect run, um, but we did get clipped a little bit. Naughty's yeah, with the ankle injury, look, looking like probably six weeks, I reckon. You always hope for for less, but at, at this stage, that's probably how it sits. So we'll miss him, obviously, because he was really starting to, I think, hit his straps a little bit. He was, he was doing well, really well in that Sydney game um, and yeah. clearly hurt himself, unfortunately. But sort of is what it is. Um, and then you've got Lloydie who had the collarbone who um, he'll probably miss four, I reckon. So we've got a couple, unfortunately, yeah. more senior players who are going to have, you know, some significant time off. But um, as we do, you just look for the opportunities and look for the players that, that yeah. get their chance to come in. And, and once again, in a, in a shortened season, you need to obviously fill those spots pretty quickly and, and, and as best we can. So I've got confidence we can do that, mate. But um, yeah, we'll just lick our wounds for, for a couple of weeks and hopefully get them back soon. Uh, and what about your own game as skipper? It was, um, uh, you know, one of the one of the best games I've seen you play, and I've I've watched every game every game you've played. How did you uh, How did you assess your own performance? It was pretty special from our our vantage point. Thanks, thanks, mate. Um, I think ultimately, you, you're especially away from away from home. You know the challenges that you're going to be facing. We're in a different time with regards to. Um, you know how we're traveling there's a few different curveballs to, to face but I think what we we all said going into the game we just sort of wanted to impose ourselves on the game early and away from home obviously normally you're dealing with a, a crowd that's that's obviously weighted to, to one end but we just sort of wanted to bring out the things that we had the previous week and just try and continue the momentum so I'd sort of spoken about that with the group and obviously you feel um, the utmost responsibility to be doing it yourself. So it was more more of just us or myself trying to obviously be that sort of influence or trying to do the things that we'd spoken about during the week. Nothing nothing really special, just trying to bring out those things um, to help, you know, help sway the, the momentum. You were feeling it though, weren't you? Let's be honest. When you when you knocked that one in from just outside 50 mm. on the left and let out a... Um, it was a very primal roar that you let that you let rip with. Is that is that when uh, what footballers talk about? Athletes talk about when they say they're in the zone. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Maybe if there's a sense, not like you, you know, sometimes like your spidey senses are tingling um, at, at times. But it's, oh, I mean, you, you know when you're probably having an influence, um, and then things obviously seem to to work out for you. Uh, more often than they don't, but it, it just felt like we were all on the same page, which helps too. Like you're getting you're getting influence yep. from across the board, from your young ones right through to your, your oldest ones, and that's when you feel like as a team you're really you're really on the edge of, of playing playing the game um, the way that you want to. So it's a great feeling to have, um, and we've just got to try and continue it, mate. Um, you had two of the more courageous marks we've seen um, in this season, and and you know, the, the last few seasons, one back with the flight where you, you know, you smashed into Heaney and then you go forward um, and a really awkward floating ball. You, you went back again with, you know, with just a, a raw sense of bravery and took the mark and kicked the goal. I did notice in the, in the last quarter, you, you kind of went back with the flight again, but didn't take the mark. Um, had, how disappointed were you with that as a leader? Because we were pretty disappointed watching on. Yeah, couldn't assess could make it through. Assessed harshly. Well, um, yeah. they let me. They let me know well, about it's, it. It's where the, do you want to it accept a, mediocrity, uh, or do you want to? Yeah. Have you ever heard the saying, uh, "These things come in threes? Or would you let uh, that I felt like one. I felt down? like one. I felt like the one maybe set you know a pretty good message. Um, I was sort of like, oh, well, I can't do it every time. Like it's just you know I needed to almost lower the expectations now, so it's be like, oh, he's good for two out of three. 
Um, right. Well, yeah, because the I mean the social media reaction was pretty pretty savage when you mm. couldn't clunk the third. Day. Really? I mean, you don't need to you don't need you, to worry about that. But feel was, feel free to send me your best, and we'll see who's yeah. matches up. We'll see who's matches up. <laughs> I'll, I'll be happy to to you know you know we'll put them next to each other, like your best versus my best, and we'll see what what works out. <laughs> <laughs> no, we might. Uh, I might. Uh, I might keep um, keep there. Um, uh, what else, man? Have you been? Um, I mean, the the news at the moment is is uh, mm. is a bit sort of dreary to put a you know to understatement of the understatement of the year in terms of the the COVID um, outbreaks mm. in Victoria. How closely are kind of watching that? Have there any yeah. scenarios been put forward to you and the players about what might happen? Not- no, nah, not to us just yet. I think we, there's a, everyone's got an understanding that there's conversations going on, but it hasn't progressed to the point where we've been presented anything just yet. Clearly, some games have been changed from for this weekend based on, I think it was the Queensland government um, and their borders. But for us, it's sort of we haven't been affected just yet as a... I say, so from a Bulldogs perspective and our game this weekend. But I think you've, you know, this whole season, you're, you're anticipating or understanding of the fact that things are going to change, mate, that you've got to sort of be ready to, to move with them as they come. Agile. And, and you've got to be agile. You've got exactly, to pivot. Pivot exactly. agile. That's the business you're, thing, you're, going, you're, an, you're, a, you're, a you're an old basketballer. You know how to pivot. <laughs> I do, I do. So I think, mate, you're just, you're just prepared for what's what's next almost. It's not a matter of sort of if, more a matter of when, I think. So, um, you know, to talk about hubs and whatnot, I think everyone's got to be open to what we can do to, to help keep it going. Obviously, those with, you know, families and obviously our extended sort of families too understand that it's going to be a challenge if it gets to that point. But you just, you're just understanding that things may need to change and, and be different. So uh, we'll be prepared to visit that when we, when we get the right info. Cool. All right. Well, um, hopefully it all works out. I'm sure uh, a lot of good people working tirelessly to keep this game ticking over, but it's um, no easy task. So um, hope everyone out there who's listening, you know, I know it's been tough times for a lot of people. So hopefully, mm. hopefully people are um, hanging in there. Um, we'll have a quick break, Skip. Um, we'll get, mm. have you a chance just to review that drop mark in the last quarter of yours, just to to keep the improvement ticking over. Um, yes. Stop settling for this mediocrity that you seem so I've got, phone, I've got my phone here when you're ready to send yours I'll through. Send through I'm ready. I'll send through. I'll send through. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Send um, it through. You might have to scroll and, pretty... <laughs> and after the break, we've got an oldie, a bulldog, who uh, was a teammate of mine. Uh, we haven't had him on the podcast before. Um, he ended up being a saint. And then, bizarrely, a kangaroo. I'd forgotten that he was also a kangaroo. Mm. Three times. Um, anyway, yeah. but after the break, we'll get Baron Ray on the podcast, or as I like to call him, King Cauliflower, right after the break. Uh, welcome back to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barkley Street. That's hashtag Barkley Street for all the cool kids out there who like to get on the socials and troll footballers like Marcus Bontempelli and even troll, you know, ex footballers like. Well, like me, I suppose, but also our next guest, yeah. who's a man of many interests, had a fascinating footy career, one of my favourite teammates of all time, Farron Ray. Farron, welcome to Barclay Street, man. Thank you, gents. Uh, I'm wrapped to be here. I'm excited to be on the show. Thank you for the kind words. That's all right. You don't sound that excited, though. You say you're excited, but are you excited? You're in a, <laughs> I'm, you're in a puffer absolutely... jacket. I'm absolutely pumped. I've got two jackets on. I'm on. I'm, uh, I'm going to take one off. Or... Well, turn just put the heater on in your house, man. You know, come on, man. Uh, Jeez. Saving money. I've, I've launched a business, mate, which I'll try and give it a plug later. But uh, oh. I save money. yes, <laughs> well, 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 we can't wait usually, to hear about this. Yeah. yeah. Well, usually we do the old. Uh, we'll get to the end. Uh, okay, let's give it a plug. Yeah. Then we'll give but it a plug. No. I knew. I knew. I told Mark as I said. This he bloke did. with that kind of plug is he business. Did. I even gave you a pre-intro of the king <laughs> of cauliflower, Farron yep. Ray. Can you, can, you, can you tell us what the business is, but also how did the fascination with cauliflower the begin? 
Yeah, so it's it's a very good question, and it's obviously a bit random for a, an ex-footballer to, to to launch a cauliflower business. Yeah, so usually it's usually it's a pub or a sports store. That was the traditional mm. paths for ex-footballers. Yeah, so I've got my beautiful partner Bianca to thank for that. She Bianca's been a type one diabetic, so she, since she's been six years of age. So very similar to Sam Reed. You boys would have played with Reedy. Yep. yep. Um, and she substituted a lot of unhealthier foods for healthier alternatives. So she's done that over the years. And then about 2016, we, um, we started, she, she had these cauliflower ideas. And, and from that, um, we started working on developing some products because it's a good substitute for rice for cauliflower rice and mashed potato for cauli mash yeah. is a, some healthier uh, alternative there. So uh, we started doing some research and development or Bianca started doing some kitchen development um, stuff. And then we've, uh, the last year and a half, we've launched a, we've launched a food product made from cauliflower. We've launched a cracker range, uh, we've launched a mm. dip range and we sell in sort of higher end gourmet independents and uh, supermarkets. And look, she's done, she's done a really good job. So I sort of backed her in. I'm, I'm definitely not the brains behind the recipes as you'd know, Bob. What, 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 do you, what, what, What's your, yeah. what is your what's role your in role? this? I'm, I'm intrigued as to, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 You spend so, a lot of time in the fridge by the, by the, by the clobber you get around in you in the, in the I, frozen uh, area department of the supermarket. <laughs> I eat, I definitely eat the recipes. That's my job. And, uh, yeah. My, important uh, role. But I, Very I've, important. um, I've funded a lot of it. I, uh, we distribute directly in Victoria. So I'm the one touching base with all the retailers. So as you boys would know, playing football gives you a, a little bit of uh, a tad bit of profile, not as much as you two, but um, and they're just sort of people skills. So I've just sort of tried to use that and touch base with the retailers. And um, you know, we use a, a distributor in Sydney, and then in Melbourne here we go direct. So I've got to I've got to find new stores and make sure they're buying our product. And Bianca sort of yeah. handing the recipe stuff and the Instagram, and there's a lot, there's a lot to it until you actually do it. You don't realize how much stuff there is. What? What's your plan, sort of like your big time or your longer term plan with regards? You're in obviously a number of stores now. Do you hope to get in more or are there other part, other products you want to start producing? Where does it go from from now? Yeah, look, we um, we want to keep developing a few more products. It's it's all about with stores and retailers and that you need shelf space um, and you need a bit of shelf presence. If you've only got a couple of products on a shelf, you sort of sink in amongst all the other products and all the other big brands. So. While this crazy time has been happening with with COVID, uh, Bianca's been busy developing products, and then I'm the one sort of mentioning those products to retailers and that. So the long term plan is 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 to get it obviously in more stores, Bont, and then um, probably you know we're just sort of winging it a bit and and, and going on 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 passion and all that. But obviously, probably to get a third party in, in, on board if it gets bigger. That's the thing. If it gets bigger, yeah. get a third party on board and, and go from there. But yeah, she's done a, Bianca's done a really good job creating the product and we have repeat customers every week. And yeah, yeah, actually, <laughs> absolutely. Bon. I need to check your Instagram. You got a few followers. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple. You, hey, a couple. Hey, I'm happy. Look, Marcus, he's the one with all the disposable. So he'll, he'll be a good investor. For, I, I've just got a couple of ideas for you, Farron. Take them or leave them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try and these, and it, this is just off the top of my head that I think you and Bianca should start referring to yourselves as the king and queen of cauliflower. That's just easy. <laughs> That's yeah. easy. That's yep. on the business cards. Tick. And is that whose dog was that in the background? Was that yours or Bont's? Mine. Bont. Well, shut your, shut your dog up. Farron, what you and Bianca need to do, you're gonna you're gonna get a border collie pup, and you're gonna take the border collie to all of your sales meetings, and the dog's name will be Border Collie Flower. Nice. <laughs> See where I'm going here. Your your creativity that I've loved from day one from sharing a locker next to you. Okay. <laughs> Is this? Do you think there's gonna be some follow up on any of my ideas so far? The third, I'll run them past Bianca. I'm not sure yeah, what she'll smart, say, smart, but the third party smart. that I need might be right here on my computer. All right. <laughs> I just reckon if you had, you know, like a a, a sales order, you tie it into the collar of border cauliflower, and in mm. any runs, how could you say no to that? Mate, Ding dong. 
I'm on. I'll just have to get it past the boss first. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll get back to you on it. I like it. I, I just like and all all I ask is just a small percentage. A small percentage. Profit. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Forty percent. Um, just, um, just give it to him, Bob. Just give him the idea. Oh, you're always trying to sink your teeth in. Come on, mate. I beg your pardon. Strange. Yeah. Strange idea. <laughs> I didn't realize I'd be giving the business a plug so early. Boy. Yes. So I, yes. I apologize, but well, I'm no, an opportunity. Hey, we're a different kind of podcast. We're I love a different it. kind. Hey, um, hey, Faz, what's your, you played 209 games, 75 of those um, with the dogs. Where's your heart? I mean, so you clearly you played more at the Saints. Do you, when you watch the footy these days, are you, are you a Saint or, a, or a, have you still got a soft spot for the doggies? I, yes and yes to both of those um, uh, things that you said there. It, it's a bit of a tough question to answer. I, I, I see myself as a St Kilda person. I have to say that a bit awkward on a on yeah. a Bulldogs podcast, but I... No, hon- honesty will set you free on here, mate. Yeah. Honesty is the go here. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I left the Bulldogs, I, you know, I got there 2003. I, I spent five years there, a great five years, and I... I, um, you know, I was a pick for a lot of, a lot of expectation for a, for a, for a high pick as, as you boys would know. But, um, when I left, I made the tough decision of, of leaving in 2008. Oh, it was a mutual sort of trade between both parties. I felt that, uh, we, we would both win out. And, um, and then since I left, I, I thought, I always thought the Bulldogs supporters were frustrated with me. So anyway, I went to the Saints and sort of moved on and we obviously played some good football there and played some good footy yeah. against you guys. So, um, but I, I've thought about this since, you know, obviously a big uh, soft spot for the Bulldogs. And when the when you guys won the flag in 2016, I, that was actually the year that I retired. So I was at the game and um, I did shed a tear. And I, I, I wasn't sure why. I didn't think so, I would. But yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I would. But exactly. I remember being with Lindsay Gilby. I think Scott West was there. And, uh, and then I ended up in a staff party that night and I shook hands with Bevo. And it's just... It's it's an interesting one with with players when they leave clubs. I think they, I think they just think that all right. Well, that club's done with me. And um, but you you yeah. really are a part of the whole history of the club and how how the clubs got to that premiership in 2016. So I know I didn't play much yeah. of a role in that, but um, you know I still got a very very much of a soft spot for the Bulldogs. Mm. Yeah, still connected for sure. I'm, I want to take you back a little bit. Like you obviously drafted. You said pick four. What were your sort of first few days at the football club like when you first when you first rolled in? Uh, well, it was a, an interesting time. So, pick four, 17 years of age. I remember I got drafted. And Scotty Clayton um, gave me the call. I said thanks, and then went to schoolies. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my um, my mum my mum had told the club, okay, great, you've drafted him, but he's going to go on schoolies. And I I had no idea what that no, meant. So I remember going on schoolies, and then um, Sunday night I slept at Mitch Hahn's house on his couch, and then Monday morning, as as Bob would know, Monday morning we're we're at the club. My first morning in the AFL, we had to meet in the meeting room there at the old Whitten Oval uh, at, at six yep. o'clock, and. I remember yep. everyone was excited. We were we were going on this training camp. We were told to bring surf clubs, golf. I uh, wasn't surf, excited. Surfboards, golf clubs. Well, there was a yeah. little bit of excitement, and then at six, yeah, 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 that yeah, excitement yeah. dropped. Oof. And um, these soldiers walked in, and the next five days, Bond was literally absolute torture. We got taken out to mental <laughs> disappointment. Um, we weren't. We weren't. Yeah, uh, we didn't have names. We were called. I was called Red Ten. We got d- given colours, <laughs> numbers, and, and um, we got woken up by gunfire one night. Um, yeah. and it was actually five days of torture. But it held me in good stead for the rest of my career, I guess. It was an interesting. Do, start. do, you, do you know my memories from that? So the first thing, Bont. So they, the, the the special operation police come in and they just lay down the law and we and the, like their whole thing is to terrify us, and we yeah. were terrified. And we probably did about 500 push-ups in the next 20 minutes and repacking our bags and it was chaos. They put us on a minibus and took us down to Port Melbourne Beach and they did a, we did a three-hour like torture session. And it is, it's still the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I don't know about you, Fad, but like physically yep. just, just torture. And I remember at one point, so Farron's, it's his first day. I still haven't met him. And the <laughs> soldiers, 
one of the cops is up in his face going, yeah, Farron, you're not on schoolies now, are you? While your mates were down there busting, <laughs> while your mates were busting their gut, you're on schoolies. Oh. I'm having a thought thinking, oh, geez, I fit, you know, some, one of us should stand up for him. <laughs> but we're all so scared of the cops. That <laughs> you know, didn't. You, you didn't. You can, yeah, you yeah, can fight champ. your own battles, champ. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh. a hell of an initiation into the into the AFL. I was like, what's going on here? What's this bloke got mm. for me? And oh, I didn't realise how frowned upon it was to go on schoolies. <laughs> oh, wow. 17 years old. What a first few days. Yeah. Oh, God. That was pretty wild. Um, oh, what was I going to say then? Um, I've got another. Can you I've tell us a bit? Curi- oh, oh, yeah, you go. You go. You go, Just a no, curious no, go, question, Bob. more more a tip, not a curious one. The name Farron, it's an interesting one. Um, um what are the orange, origins of the name Farron? Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's given me some grief over the years, especially on the phone, <laughs> on the phone or in Thai takeaway. The the Asian people <laughs> seem to seem to get it. Um, so what, what what's what's the usual what kind get? of is it? Darren, what's the what? It's Darren, <laughs> it's, it's Gavin, <laughs> Sharon, which is a female name, but Sharon, it's it's anything, it's anything but Farron. They they'll call me Bob before they call me Farron. So, um, so the origin of it is uh, after a country and western singer, Farron Young, and and it's originated. Oh. It's an Irish name apparently. So mum and dad were right. Mum and dad were. I think big hippies back in the day. So <laughs> um, they wanted to go something uh, different and, and they got it. They now they it. did. They did. <laughs> hey, Faz, you played some bloody good footy at the Bulldogs. You know, your, your ability to run and, and you're always um, a really underrated by some, not by me, of an, an overhead mark. Then you get traded to the, traded to the Saints. You're only a young bloke by that point. Um, and the Saints you sort of you timed that into this you know the era of you know one of the most successful probably the most successful era in that footy club's history without getting the without getting the big prize at the end of it what was that what was that time like the the changeover of clubs and then and then the run that you guys went on and and, you know got so agonizingly close a couple of times yeah look it was a hell of a time in in my life and my career so you know the what i spoke about before the difficult decision of I had some great mates at, at the Bulldogs and, and obviously you're still one of them and uh, a few of the other boys, but I, I never hesitated on, on leaving for my football. I just, things weren't clicking there and the Saints needed a running player and we probably had an abundance of running players at that time at the Bulldogs. Yep. So I remember meeting with Ross Lyon and Rossi's, um, you know, fierce sort of sarcasm as he's got, he, uh, you know, just had a quick meeting with him and I, I remember trade week was pretty tough. It only went for a week. Uh, back then and I think by third I was in I was on footy trip at the time in Bali and um, the trade hadn't the trade hadn't gone through about Thursday night so I remember texting Leon Cameron who was my midfield coach at the time um, and I just said mate can you please get the deal done Um, you know blah 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 and then it ended up getting done the next morning so um, you know trade week's always an interesting time for for players but um, yeah then when I got to the Saints, it just sort of worked nicely. Rossi sort of let me play my role on the wing. And, um, you know, I, was, I, I thought that I was very much of a role player. While um, I think yeah. I needed those I think I think needed those superstar players just so I could fit in and, and play my role. Yeah. And at the Saints, we obviously had a, a fantastic team. And, you know, 2009, we won 19 straight, which is, which is pretty special. And... And we ended up playing you guys four times that year. One in the preseason, two in oh, season. That's, and then, oh, and that's then, right. And then prelims. So I played the prelims. old side yeah, four yeah. times, which was... But um, wow. yeah, and then fast forward to 2010 when we, we played Collingwood twice as a draw. It was just mm. an extraordinary time that went went all too quickly. But um, yeah, the, the I think that group, uh, we, we didn't get the ultimate prize, which is which is frustrating, but we're still pretty close off the field and we catch up once a year. And that's probably more, you know, obviously I would have loved to want a flag, but that's, that's yeah, important yeah. as well. We're a pretty sort of tight knit group and um, yeah. yeah, it was a special time. Are you, have you rewatched the grand finals at all? Or is it just kind of a bit too kind of difficult? 
I I have, and I've seen snippets. I've I've obviously seen the. You can't avoid some of the most famous moments in the 09 and you know we're talking yeah, yeah. about bounces and toe pokes and things like that, but mm. um, yeah. not really. I mean, they're just as you boys would know, finals are just the hardest mm. games that you play in, and they're mm. and they're um, uh, they're they're a bit of a blur. Any finals we're talking prelims, yeah. semi-finals, they are a bit of a blur. So. Um. Yeah, it was an extraordinary time. Yeah, and um, we're just doing. I was doing a bit of research, and I was kind of a bit embarrassed. I had completely forgotten about the year at the Kangas. And when, when oh. I when I read it, I was like, oh, I was like, oh, like I kind of pitch you in the jumper, but then I'm I'm just had kind of wiped it. What what was what was that experience like? Three clubs, journeyman, journeyman. officially a journeyman at three clubs. Officially a journeyman, I, I uh, so I only, obviously only had the one year at North Melbourne. So the end of 2015, um, I think there was there was maybe only going to be a rookie list at the Saints, similar to what they did with yeah. Adam Schneider the year before. Yeah, who and was coaching at the Saints then? Was that uh, are we talking Scotty Waters or is that know, Rich, still Richo. Ross? Richo. Richo. Oh, jeez, I'm way out. That's right. So uh, we had Richo the Bulldogs development coach. Yep, yep, yep. That's right. We did. Yep. Um, so, good man, Richo. Good man, Richo. So, end of 2015, you know, as you get older, the young players got to come through. So, but I was literally done. My last couple of years was 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 interesting in the AFL. My passion for the game had really dropped off, really dropped yeah. off. So, right. I remember sitting down with my manager end of 15, and I said, "Look, is there any 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 interest from other clubs?" He's like, "Not much, mate." And this was probably midway through that holiday period, you know, when we all go away and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And oh, I don't know, trade week and all that was either before or after. I'm getting mixed up with my times. But then North Melbourne, I think Nick Del Sano, another great mate of mine, I think he sort of instigated it a bit because Dal loves having mates around him. And anyway, North Melbourne showed some interest. And I I thought about it because I wasn't going to – I was happy, content with, to be to be finished yeah. up. But um, I thought about it and then decided to make the move. And, and North Melbourne were fantastic. I just – I was only there for a year and I wanted to do more. When I went from the Bulldogs to the Saints, it worked really well. But, you know, I played four games of which one was a hamstring injury and one was a Falcon Friday night football. <laughs> so I wasn't overly proud, but very, very <laughs> thankful of my time. Yeah. Mm. Well, you might not have been shin boner of the century, but you got the jump. You got three <laughs> clubs. That's... Um, um, can, I ask, can I ask you, because um, of my paths very briefly crossed with um with Ross Lyon international rules and he's a he's an endless source of kind of fascination for me I'm kind of intrigued about about the dynamic of your relationship with with Ross and if you've got any little um any sort of little anecdotes or yarns of, of that time in your footy career if you want a good impersonation I, I don't I'm not as good as the other boys so I'll hold off on the impersonating but yeah I mean Ross Lyon, very interesting character, fierce coach character, but he was great for me. I, I, he valued what I offered when I first got there. And um, I remember when I, I said before in trade week, I was in, in Bali with, with, the, with all you boys. Um, well, a few of the Bulldog boys. I'm not sure if you were there, actually. But um, you didn't get the invite. Um, <laughs> Text and, didn't um, come through. Yeah, it didn't come through. And I remember uh, we'd been out the night before and I, I had to stay up because Rossi was calling me at seven in the morning after trade oh. week. So I hadn't, I hadn't slept. And then I, I remember just with his sort of sarcasm and just rock up and be a pro. I remember he said that, just rock up and be a pro. And, um, and then the that. best way to describe Rossi is he, he's fiercely loyal. So, you know, yeah. I th- he, he sort of used to play players that used to get a bit of criticism from the, the media and the fans and all that. But yeah. if he saw you in the side as playing a role that he wanted, he, he backed you in. But yeah. Rossi's, you know, and the good thing about Rossi, he'd come out and have a beer with you. But, yeah. And he'd be the last one there. He, he would outlast all the other boys. And then come Monday morning, if you weren't training hard, he would put an absolute rocket up you. So he's yeah. just got this amazing knack of being sarcastic at times but just fierce and just the most scariest yeah. personal yes yeah. 
He, um, do you remember? I'm not sure who you would have been playing for at this point, but I remember we had it was like at the start of pre season, and the Bulldogs and the Saints were at the same part of Prince's Park. And because you know, both sides, you know, it was a strong rivalry, and we were sort of meeting in the final, so there was, there was a natural tension anyway between the Saints and the Bulldogs. <laughs> and I, <laughs> there was one point I remember that. Ross's car, he had to get it, he had to get it, put a ticket in his car. And to get there, he had to walk through the Bulldogs. And, I, and so we're all sort of huddled around. I never forget this. And some people don't find this funny, but I still find it funny to this day. So he has to walk like 20 metres and there's this tension in the air. And so he has to say something, doesn't he? Like you can't, you can't just walk through and not say something. anything. Yep. Yep. And he's got his, you know, he's got his, you know, his walk that has kind of been mimicked. He's just sort of, he just sort of swans through and gets up close to the group and just goes, Rocket's been sacked, boys. I'm taking over. And just walks through the... <laughs> and honestly, I've absolutely, I lost it. I thought it was the funniest line. And a lot of our boys, they were just sort of like stunned silence. Oh, oh. It was so good. <laughs> uh, Rocket's been sacked, boys. I'm taking over. He must have got sort a of laugh. Oh, you got a laugh out of me. I was yeah. on the floor. I loved it. That was good. Well, hey, I remember, Baz, oh, I wish, I, yeah, sorry, you go. No, nah, no, nah, I was just going to say, I remember when I, um, after I'd left, you, I remember you wrote that article. I, you wrote that article. Oh, about yes. And um, That's right. I think that was the lead in to the Bulldog when we played you guys in round yeah. six. And, yeah. um, you know, in your creative ways, you wrote a really nice article about me sort of finding another, um, finding another club and, Things going well, and then uh, and some good analogies in there, and then I bump into Rossi first thing, maybe the day after it was in the paper, and the, he's just like, "Whatever you do, don't believe that, all right? Okay, don't believe that bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think he meant it. I think it was genuine, yeah. but he wasn't. Happy, was he? Yeah, <laughs> I think he, I think he might have thought that I was playing some sort of Jedi mind trick, but I was just yeah. um, just trying to say some nice things about my old teammate. Yeah. Um, Hey, Faz, we could sit here and, and, uh, and chat for hours. Um, it was always fun, to, always fun to have a natter with you. Um, look forward to catching up with you properly in the next little while. Um, but uh, you might have sensed that a bit of frustration from the Bulldogs, mate, but uh, you are a much-loved figure, I can assure you, of that this podcast will be very well received. Bont, if you could just shut your dog up for two seconds, that would be ideal. As Just we say goodbye. Up. The credits are rolling, mate. Hurry as up. We, as we say goodbye to the coldest man <laughs> yeah. in the cauliflower yes. industry. There is yes. King the cauliflower king. Cauliflower. I couldn't leave without getting up there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> is this video oh, or just perfect. audio? Is it? Is this pod? Both, yeah, no, oh, yeah, both. We get a bit of you got it both. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll audio and visual format. Um, go yeah. well, man. Great to see you. Great to hear your voice. Good luck Thanks, with everything. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bond. No worries, Good on you, man. Good You're a legend.